but the recording started, so Sharon and Claire, over to you. OK, that's great. I've just got a wee presentation, so I'll just get that up. It's having a wee think about it. Let me know when you can see it. Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh, yep, okay. that's it. Perfect. So um, I'm Sharon McNabb and um, I work for an organisation called CERC, which I know many of you may have heard of before, but if you haven't, we are based in Dunfermline and we're there to, as it says there, inspire and through support STEM educators, and that's STEM, all STEM educators, really to benefit the learners. Um, so I have been programme manager for the Young STEM Leader programme for about six months now, so I'm still quite new to the post. And before that, uh, I worked at Glasgow Science Centre, so I see Sally's here today. It's nice to see Sally, one of my previous colleagues as well. And I'm here with Claire, who is what we term in CERC an RTAV, and I'll let Claire introduce herself and explain what an RTAV is in the Young STEM Leader Programme. Hi everyone, Claire McGinley. Um, RTAV, it sounds really fancy, doesn't it? I quite like it. It sounds like a robot um, is what I always think, but yeah, it <laughs> means Associate Regional Trainer and Verifier, which is a mouthful. So RTAV sounds uh, much better. Um, so my remit is for CLD. So um, try and get more people to um, deliver the award across CLD settings. Um, and just kind of inspire people to take part in this award. Wearing my other hat, I'm also the development manager over at Paisley YMCA. So I see some familiar colleagues um, from that journey. Hi, Hilary. Hi, Katie. Um, so, yeah, we are a STEM and digital youth workspace over in Paisley. OK, so we have 13 RTAVs um, involved in the Young STEM Leader Programme and they're for all different backgrounds and all different geographic settings right across the country. And all together, we work together um, to deliver the Young STEM Leader Programme. So CERC has three main roles which can support you in um, STEM delivery. So we deliver a huge programme in professional learning and that's again for all sectors. Um, so please have a look on the CERC website because we have a professional learning programme there and you can see the different courses that we run and it's everything from um, specific areas of science through to digital as well. We have an advisory service, which is really if you're delivering activity and you want some advice on health and safety and the um, experiment that you're running, then that's the kind of advice that we can give you through our advisory service. But where I sit is within the STEM engagement team. And there we run the STEM ambassador programme, which I think Aileen Hamilton's maybe been along and spoken to you before. So she's my colleague. And the Young STEM Leader programme sits in there as well. And that's really what I'd like to talk to you about for the rest of the time. So the Young STEM Leader programme came out of the STEM strategy for Scotland and really what it was set to do was exactly as it says here. But the key thing for me is that it was to provide mentoring and inspiration in STEM for children and young people by children and young people. And I think that's the thing that we absolutely live by in the Young STEM Leader Programme, that it really is a completely learner centred approach. So what does that really mean? Well, it means it's about empowering and mobilising young people to deliver STEM activity because we know there's lots of barriers to STEM and becoming a scientist. Lots of people thinking, well, science isn't for me. There's lots of stereotypes out there. So what the Young STEM Leader Programme is, is, is a, a route to take young people through to make them become leaders of STEM. So they lead an activity um, and it's really up to them what the activity is and what the activity may be you're running with the young people. So you can see here, we've got some young people who are delivering maybe a sort of more traditional hands-on style workshop with other young people. You've got in the centre there, you've got an, an older boy who's working with a younger boy and that's in a sort of digital space and he's supporting him in digital skills. And then you've got some girls there who are doing maybe sort more traditional messy science and that was part of a STEM fair. So to participate in Young STEM Leader you do lead a STEM activity but it really is your STEM activity that you're sharing with other people and that can be in any setting or any way at all. 
So the first thing to say is this programme is completely free for everyone, for every young person in Scotland to access. It is supported by the Scottish Government and it is for all young people in Scotland to participate in. So there's two things to consider as part of the programme. The person that's delivering it, and that could be you. So in order to deliver the programme, you need to become what we call a tutor assessor. So to become a tutor assessor, that means that you get trained by CERC, by us and people like Claire as well, um, by CERC staff. And it's a two hour training course that you would attend. Tends to happen kind of four to six. It's an online course. You would go along to that. And by the end of that, you would be a trained tutor assessor and you would be able to deliver the Young STEM Leader programme. You would be able to then support Young STEM Leaders to deliver the programme, to participate in the programme, and you would also at the same time learn about assessment and quality assurance and you would become qualified um, to make sure you can manage the Young STEM Leader programme because it is a certified qualification. You'd also get access to lots and lots of different resources that would help you deliver that programme. So for the young person then, you would be enabling them to lead STEM activities, to therefore build their STEM capital, to make them feel, well, STEM is for me. It's not just all people in white coats that sit in these um, places with the, the funny hair. It's actually me. I can be a STEM leader. I'm a role model. People can see me delivering STEM. So it's building my confidence and also it's building your leadership and employability skills. So it's not just about your hands on STEM. STEM activity, but it's actually thinking about the other skills that you're developing, that you're using, your communication skills, your listening skills, your team working skills. We help you to build all these skills in the young people through our programme. And all the way through what you're doing is gathering evidence for the award in a really simple, easy to follow logbook um, that we have. So there's different levels of the programme and these are aligned traditionally to the curriculum for excellence levels. But the beauty of these is that they're not confined by any sort of school setting. They're con they are determined on where your learner is. So we have levels two to four which we call the non-formal levels. And that simply means that you participate in these, you do get a certificate at the end, you can get a Young STEM Leader badge, but these are not accredited qualifications. You don't get points as opposed towards these because we also have levels four, five, six, and we're about to launch level seven after summer. And these are SQA, so Scottish Qualification um, Accredited Awards. So that means that there are real qualification that your young people will get credit points for completing that qualification and um, everything that's associated with it. So it is a real qualification um, at those levels. So these are the types of things that you will get when you become a tutor assessor. So we have a full range of support notes at all the different levels, which is everything that you would ever want to know in order to deliver the Young STEM Leader programme. You will also get access to logbooks, which are the logbooks that the young people themselves can complete. And these are available as paper copies, so you can have logbooks, we can provide some to you, you can also uh, print them off online. And then you will also have activity packs and within the activity packs are a full set of resources, of lessons, if you like, of activities that you can do to support your young people to achieve the Young STEM Leader programme. Now, the key thing about the Young STEM Leader Programme is that we have a whole series of what we term learning outcomes or, or actions that you're working towards with the young people. The activity packs can be really prescriptive and can help you deliver all of these different um, learning outcomes. Or you might have lots of activities that you're already running, in which case you should absolutely 100% use them. So the programme is as prescriptive as you would like it to be to support you and your young people, or it's as open as you would like it to be to support you and your young people. The key thing is that you are already doing lots of STEM activities within your setting. And what we want to do is provide a framework around which your young people can achieve a certificate. They can achieve the Young STEM Leader Award. So we want it to be their activities that they're already doing anyway, and then to build around that some frameworks that can help them to really consider and think about leadership, about their communication skills, and 
actually to note that and gather evidence. So the last thing to say really is the logbook is paper. It can involve writing if that's what you would like it to do. But equally, we have um, a website or we can use the paper copies. And there's a portal on there where young people can access it digitally. Both the systems enable you to upload photographs, to do a wee piece to camera, um, to really gather evidence in any way that shows the young people has been participating in the programme. So it's not about the quality of the written word, it's absolutely the opposite of that. It's actually about the young person collating their Young STEM leader journey in whichever way is most suitable for them to make it most accessible for them. So I'm going to hand over to Claire, who's going to talk you through a wee bit more about how this has been used in the CLD sector and what it looks like there. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. OK, so as Sharon said, I am going to speak a bit about the Young STEM Leader Programme and CLD and why it's so important, why I'm so passionate, why I absolutely love this award. Um, but I think it's really important that we do embed it in CLD settings and then share some examples of uh, the Young STEM Leader Programme in the wild in CLD settings. So I think it's really important to pick up that when we say the Young STEM Leader Programme is for every young person in Scotland, just as there's people that will immediately discount themselves from being in STEM, then you've got this subset of young people that would go, oh, that young STEM leader program's not really for me at all. This is where CLD sits perfectly and can perfectly support young people to gain an award. So we kind of support and spread the message that STEM is everywhere. So I had a conversation in, in my little room there about maths is everywhere and we don't really think about that sometimes um but stem really is everywhere so the first conversation i'll have with a young person is you get this bag of haribo if you can name a job that does not have stem in it can anyone name a job that doesn't have stem in it i don't have any haribo but <laughs> you know we, we we think about that um we've had some really great answers but it really is everywhere. And what does it look like if we spread that message? What does it look like if we have every young person seeing themselves in STEM? I had a really good conversation with Science Kayleigh about this last year. So the world of STEM should really reflect the communities that they're working in. So we want all types of people. We want everyone to see themselves in STEM. That's what's great about the award. It's a leadership opportunity for young people, but it's also an opportunity for them to access STEM in a way that works for them and is and can be entirely led by them. So I'll show you some examples of that if we move on to the next slide. Thank you. OK, where's my fellow nerds? Does anyone know what the first logo is there? Out yourselves. <laughs> I might have, might have hinted at it earlier on in my little networking waterfall. Okay. All right. I'm the only big nerd here. That's fine. I'm happy with it. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So this is really huge in our setting at the moment. And there's a really lovely journey around this Dungeons and Dragons example which is, is just an incredible example of embedding STEM in our CLD practice, but also using the Young STEM Leader uh, programme to support that. So we're currently working with um, a local school of a few young people who are not attending school, but they're choosing to come to our space and complete their Young STEM Leader Award, um, which is absolutely incredible. We speak to them as we always do as youth workers, find out their interests, find out what they're they're into. And this young person was really interested in, they didn't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, but they wanted to find out about it. So my thing is always, well, you better bring STEM in there somewhere. And my wonderful youth worker, Kieran said, well, actually, there's a whole lot of maths that goes into Dungeons and Dragons. So let's build something around that. So the wee link that I've shared 
um, in the networking waterfall talks more about interdisciplinary learning and how you can use kind of maths approaches in D and D. So sometimes we call it stealth learning in CLD, but we're making it a bit more overt. So in order to gain this award, this young person is creating a whole D and D game and is going to run that with some fellow youth workers and with some teachers from his school. So really thinking outside the box there, but really reining in the young person's interests. In the middle here, we have one of uh, my wonderful STEM girls here at Paisley YMCA um, with some STEM cupcakes, if you can actually see that, or a little <laughs> STEM symbols on there. We're all about the STEM. So again, we can, when we talk about things like sustainable de development goals, learning for sustainability, we're already doing this in our practice. So these are things that run through the Young STEM Leader Award as well. Um, I want to share a wonderful example of my lovely colleague in South Lanarkshire Council, Stephen Youngson. Some of you may know him, Hilary, I know you know Stephen. Um, so in order to gain their Young STEM Leader Award, the young people actually created this retro gaming machine. So they built this whole thing, they designed it. So they went through the design process um, and they um, used a Raspberry Pi for the, the processing system. So that, that was just an incredible example of just taking the young person's interests and supporting them to gain an award. Um, I'm but really bizarrely clear. Sorry to interrupt, but sure. I was uh, speaking about this um, in our in our breakout room, um, <laughs> just because um, one of the other things that Stephen did with his group is he got the STEM ambassadors to come in um, and um, talk to the young people about um, design thinking in in relation to how how Concord was designed. So it was an airplane designer um, that came in to speak to them. Um, and it was the airplane designer that kind of inspired them in terms of the process. Um, yeah, so so yeah, it's a great story and one that I refer to from time to time. So yeah. it just so happened the the time was today. Perfect. I love that, Hilary. Yeah, and, and again, sometimes as practitioners, we, especially in CLD, we're doing things and we don't realise we're doing them so we're we're doing that design thinking process all the time we're doing iterations and iterative thinking um and it's good for us and it's good for our confidence as well that that we we name those things and we realize that's actually what we're doing so access to training that youth link have access to the stem ambassadors hub and the the training offers that CERC have just really support our our confidence and grow it so I could go on about that all day, but I'll stop. So <laughs> Sharon, do you want me to take this one or? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, you go, you go. Um, this is a, a QR code um, to our events page. You can sign up for Tutored Assessor Training. I will say it's a very supportive program. It's a very supportive award. That's something I always say throughout my training. Um, lots of expertise and lots of support and lots of enthusiasm. So if you're considering signing yourself up or getting young people involved in the award, please do. And also feel free to reach out to Sharon and I because we'd be more than happy to chat you through it as well. Thank you. And that's really us. So I don't know if anyone's got any questions. Thanks both of you. I'll just stop the recording folks just before we go into